Thank you. Uh, I know you've only been here four months, and you want to continue the debate and the discussion, but as I'm listening to everything you're, you're saying about, uh, about the status of the schools now and the things that have to be done, I wonder if we've ever had a prior commissioner in place. Uh, because it seems kind of amazing to me that you're saying that there's no statewide curriculum and each school district is determining their own curriculum in the state of New York. Did the, those curriculum, did the curriculi, I guess that's it, did they get, did they, curricula, did they get, did they get uh, approved by the state education department? Or can a school district decide that the curriculum is going to be whatever they choose it to be? Here's what we have in place. We have a set of state assessments, three through eight, and of course the region's examination. We have a system of curriculum frameworks that are linked to standards. We have state standards. Those state standards are uh, being revised right now, starting with English language arts, um, and the regions will be looking very soon at the national core curriculum standards and looking at whether New York State will be adopting those core curriculum standards alongside the work that Regent Cohen and his team have done in ELA. So we have standards, we have assessments, and we have curriculum frameworks. The difficulty is that even taking all of those things in place, it still leaves us short of curriculum at the district level. So for example, um, each ELA teacher may decide um, what texts are to be read in, in, in her classroom or his classroom. Now, there may be a good argument for never suggesting that we impose any particular list. The difficulty <laughs> is that we want to be sure that the reading material right, is absolutely appropriate to acquiring the skills and knowledge that the age of that student requires. Let me give you a quick, quick example. I don't okay. need an example. Okay. Let, me, let me just follow this thought. Right. So right now, teachers can choose whatever books they choose, and the state education department doesn't review that presently? There is a long history in this country of leaving such choices to the local districts. So you got standards, you got assessments, and, but, right. and then they make the curricula, then you review the curricula to make sure it meets the standards. Um, my doesn't, understand that, doesn't it make more sense to, to have a set curricula and maybe give some variables as far as uh, uh, textbooks so that uh, there's some type of uniformity if they're supposed to pass uniform uh, textbooks? Senator, I, I, I have been in, in the travels that my senior deputy and I have made so far. We have talked about this with teachers, with parents, with principals, and they agree with you and they agree with us that if we could move to a greater sense of a statewide curriculum, this would serve us all. I don't want to minimize the issues involved. Are you intending, uh, have you started to create a statewide curriculum? Not yet. And when do you anticipate doing that? As soon as possible, we want to start the conversations, as I suggested to um, Assemblyman Hayes. We want to begin with the frameworks and, and begin to drill down to the curriculum level. That's our first order of business in this area. Would it make sense to start uh, getting data from the high-performing districts and uh, mm -hmm. maybe use those as models? Absolutely. Let me make one other point on this. this. Let me give you an example. In Texas, they did an analysis of the books that were being read in the last years of high school, 11th and 12th grade, the difficulty of those texts. Then they looked at the college, that uh, community college and four-year college texts that were being read in, in literature classes and, and other, other subjects. And they saw a serious gap and, and in those two figures. Which told, and, and it seems to me that when we talk about one pipeline of education, when we talk about preparing our students to succeed in college and in the workforce, we, we are absolutely going to have to make sure that those breakages, those gaps, don't occur. So when we go from college backwards, we have to backwards design our curriculum to make sure that we have one system that at each stage is actually preparing our students to the quality of knowledge and skills they need to end up where we owe them the destination to end up with. Isn't, hasn't that been the role of the state education department since the beginning of time? 
And, uh, you know, I, I'm, uh, you know, maybe I'm very naive here. I just, uh, I, we have a huge administration of the education system in the state of New York, and it seems that this should not be a new concept or a very new uh, uh, idea that we're finally getting around to. This boggles the mind. Uh, well, let me give you an example that would be raised uh, in, in response to these suggestions. Uh, you might well have a group of parents or a group of teachers say to me, Commissioner, yes, I, I accept the idea that a common state standard uh, should be backed up by a common state curriculum. Um, but I don't believe that you should be prescribing a list of six books that have to be read in ninth grade. Well, why don't we say this? At least this is what I thought we did back a few years ago, and that is you have a list of books that have to be read, and teachers and parents can have their students read other books. Right. I mean, isn't that reasonable? Right. I, I was partly brought up in a different system, as you can tell probably from my accent, forgive it. Um, in, in that system, teachers were given a, an option to choose, let's say, five books from a list of 20. And students then wrote essay exams on those books. The advantage of that was when they got to college, they'd already had practice writing essay-based assessments under pressure and it encouraged them to do deep learning in those books. So I, I believe you and I agree about this. I think I don't want to be insensitive to um, the issues that come to local control, the issues that come from different communities uh, having different views uh, about material. So I think getting that balance right is critical, but I think we can move much further in the direction you and I have been discussing. Well, I would vote for insensitivity uh, <laughs> against insensitivity and for performance. Uh, and I think that we'd worry about sensitivity when these kids can't uh, get a, into college or they drop out of school. Well, I've got a, a lot of questions, but in the infinite wisdom, uh, the Finance Committee meeting is scheduled at the same minute, and I have to be over there. But a couple other areas I want to just touch on. Uh, you mentioned mandate relief, and uh, 130 reports that uh, are sort of once again, we've had many commissioners in the past. Has no one ever realized that there's 130 reports that have to be done and that you could save X dollars? Has there been any study in the past? I imagine there's some carryover people in the education department right now. Has there ever been any study in the past that there's, this is ridiculous, that, uh, or did you just come up with this four months ago and no one else thought of it? And did anyone ever? say, of these 130 reports, I could make two reports that make everything together and save a lot of money for the state education system in the state of New York. Anybody ever thought of that novel, incredible idea? Um, I'm looking forward rather than back. Um, I'm turning to my colleagues who have historical memory to ask if, if there is, has been an analysis previously. Yes, I think we did, a, the, the study was done a couple of years ago, and we made a proposal um, for a reduction. I don't believe the bill passed, but it has been something we've been looking at and, and trying to get through for a couple of years. Can you give me that bill? I'll, if, uh, I will embarrass anyone who will right. vote no. 